Hey, it's Chris. Apple just released a brand new lower cost Apple Pencil with USB-C, which, if you're counting, brings us to three Apple Pencils to choose from. And this is something that's left a lot of people feeling confused. Today, I'm gonna help you sort it all out. And I do just wanna note, I will be doing a full actual review after having tested and used the new Apple Pencil later. So as of right now, Apple's still selling the first gen Apple Pencil, you know, the slippery one that people made fun of for plugging into the lightning port. Well, it still has a lightning port on there, but now in the box, it comes with a USB-C adapter. So it's a messy product and it's still in the lineup for a reason that's gonna become apparent in just a moment, but it's running $99. Apple also sells the very great Apple Pencil 2, the second gen, which is what you would currently call the best Apple Pencil, runs $129. This one's great because it has a non-slippery design, thankfully, and it can also charge wirelessly via this magnetic connection up at the top, but that's not all because it also has this capacitive touch button on the side, which lets you easily switch between functions, which you can program. And then there's the brand new USB-C Apple Pencil, the newest Apple Pencil, which has a price that sits between the other two Apple Pencils at $79. So you might expect it to have features that also neatly fit between the other two Apple Pencils, but that's where things start to get kind of confusing for people. I mean, one of the great things about the new Apple Pencil is that it's cheaper than the flagship Apple Pencil here, but it's not cheaper than just including an Apple Pencil in the iPad box. iPads don't come with a stylus in the box. You have to buy it separately, which is different than Samsung's strategy because Samsung ships an S Pen, their stylus, in the box with their flagship tablet. So if you're somebody who's comparing a Samsung tablet and an Apple tablet, that is something that you're probably taking into consideration. So you can see why some people are starting to feel a bit confused because the choices aren't just super clear cut and straightforward. People are wondering why isn't there just one Apple Pencil and Apple's official press release kind of frames things as saying, well, hey, here's more options for you as a consumer and something that's more budget friendly. But at this point, are consumers feeling really empowered by all the options or just confused? And maybe the most confusing feature about the new Apple Pencil as people begin to compare these is that it doesn't have pressure sensitivity. It's got tilt sensitivity, low latency, and pixel perfect precision, but no pressure sensitivity, which oddly is something that the Gen 1 Apple Pencil, the $99 version at the moment, the slippery one, does have. So it's not like there's just a simple, straightforward, good, better, and best like you might expect with three Apple Pencils. What I think of as the worst Apple Pencil, the Gen 1, is better in this regard than this new budget Apple Pencil. And then adding to people's confusion potentially is that the new USB-C Apple Pencil looks very similar, shares a very similar design to the flagship Apple Pencil, even though it's missing the bells and whistles. No capacitive touch, no magnetic charging. So yeah, it's understandable why people are feeling a bit confused right now. This isn't as straightforward as say, buying my new productivity course, learning to be productive, which can massively improve your life, which just so happens to be 30% off right now for a limited time. It can help you get more done in less time in the Apple ecosystem. The benefits are clear. But if you're still confused as to why Apple would release this new Apple Pencil now, ask yourself what Neil asked. How would Apple sell just one Apple Pencil model without also needing to sell accompanying adapters and dongles, etc.? This magical super pencil would have to have some kind of a port to work with older iPad models, the ones that don't have any magnetic charging, but then somebody's probably thinking to themselves, well, why doesn't Apple just add USB-C to the second gen Apple Pencil? Wouldn't that solve all the problems? Well, no, because then you would still need some sort of adapter or dongle. So unfortunately, it really does seem like Apple's in a position where they can't easily offer just one Apple Pencil for all iPad users right now. I see a lot of people saying it'd make more sense if we just axed that Gen 1 Apple Pencil and added some pressure sensitivity to this new one, the USB-C here, the budget. But one thing I will say, whatever Apple Pencil you were to go with, I would absolutely recommend getting yourself a paper-like screen protector. Subscribers know that I love using a paper-like screen protector on all of my iPads from the mini to the pro. It's a must for me because it makes writing or drawing on an iPad feel so much better, a million times better. You can check it out using the link down in the description. Now, something that's important to point out about the new USB-C Apple Pencil here is that a lot of people are gonna analyze it through the lens of what it doesn't have. No programmable, double-tappable button, no magnetic wireless charging. But what about what it does have? Because it does 
have some really good stuff. For instance, it does have the hover feature, so that lets me preview what my stroke is gonna look like. The other thing that it does have is the Apple logo on there. Now, I'm not just bringing that up because an Apple Pencil could be like a status symbol, although maybe some people do kind of treat it like that, but I'm bringing that up because Apple stuff tends to work better together. I've tried a bunch of different Apple styluses, and I gotta tell you, those cheap ripoffs that you're gonna see on Amazon and similar sites are not as good as an Apple Pencil. In fact, they're nowhere close to as good as an Apple Pencil. They just aren't. The experience is awful. They're more or less just straight up pieces of trash, garbage. Okay, so the fact that this has the Apple logo on there, it's a real Apple product means not only is it gonna work better with your iPads, but you're also gonna be able to take advantage of Apple support here in case you ever need it. That's worth something. Now, like I tweeted or I guess posted now that it's called X, I think the real question for a lot of customers is gonna end up being not how does the new USB-C Apple Pencil compare to other Apple Pencils, but how does it compare to some of the comparable third-party alternatives? Like what? Well, maybe like the Zag Pro Stylus 2, with all of its crazy colors, and it does have an alternative wireless charging option. That retails for $80, so it is in the neighborhood there. Or there's also the Adonit Note Plus 2, which is $70. And I wanna point out that it does have pressure sensitivity baked in, and it also has interchangeable tips. All right, but getting back to what this new quote-unquote budget USB-C Apple Pencil does have, it has that non-slippery design, that really counts for something. And then it does have a cheaper price versus the Gen 2, the flagship Apple Pencil. All right, so the new USB-C Apple Pencil is $20 less than the Gen 1 with pressure sensitivity. Is it worth paying 20 extra dollars to get that old design with that slippery like an eel feel along with that adapter setup? If I was you and you're in a position where you can avoid that Gen 1 Apple Pencil, I would say do it. I don't like it. It's not my favorite, I wouldn't recommend it. What's kind of interesting or maybe even annoying depending on your perspective is that not all people can just be like, well, yeah, would I wanna pay that 50 extra dollars to grab the flagship Apple Pencil? Well, you can't say that because not all iPads are compatible with the flagship Apple Pencil. If you have the base iPad 10, the 10th gen iPad, how would you even charge the second gen Apple Pencil 2? So that means if you want to upgrade to the best Apple Pencil, you actually have to upgrade to either the Air or the Pro iPad. So now we're talking about upgrading iPads, not just Apple Pencils. So you see how crazy this whole thing gets? So the real question then is, well, how much of a difference does it make to have this button where you can double tap and switch out features, you know, based on whatever it is that you'd like it to do? Or is it a must have to be able to wirelessly charge when you stow this away? Well, my feeling is that the double tap feature is not a must have, it's a nice to have, but it's a really, nice to have. Personally, I could get by without it, but I really wouldn't want to. And I guess the same is more or less true with the magnetic wireless charging here. When you've got the magnetic wireless charging, you never have to worry about whether or not your Apple Pencil is juiced up and ready to go. So just to kind of shift into a different realm, I hate when I sit down at my desk setup and my Mac's keyboard or the mouse isn't charged up, it's out of battery. And I have to stop and pause everything I'm doing, go charge it for five or 10 minutes just to get enough juice to keep going. To not have to worry about charging up the Apple Pencil really is nice. Now, it's also convenient, but the new USB-C Apple Pencil also magnetically attaches even to the base iPad, but it just won't charge. What it will do, if you attach to the base iPad, is it will go into sleep mode, so it'll at least conserve some of its power, and it won't drain as fast. But yeah, I mean, the magnetic wireless charging, it's a life upgrade, I'm not gonna lie. One last detail I wanna point out is that on the old Apple Pencil, the Gen 1, where you had the actual cap that popped off that covered the lightning port there. That's not the way that the cover works that covers the USB-C port here. That does extend out, but it kind of magnetically snaps into place, but it won't come off. So you're not gonna have to worry about losing it. And then it just snaps back into place. I also point out that when it pops out to reveal that USB-C port, at that point, it's about the same length as the Gen 2. Apple Pencil, this Apple Pencil right here. But when you slide that cover back, then it's a little bit shorter than this Gen 2 Apple Pencil here. So I guess what I would say is that this Apple Pencil mess, as some people might call it, is really just a reflection of the iPad lineup in general at the moment. And like getting rid of one of the Apple Pencil options might be kind of nice, it could be time to maybe think about getting rid of one of the iPads as well. I would love to hear your thoughts about that because choice is good to an extent, but obviously too much choice 
can be a bad thing if it leads to confusion rather than feeling empowered. So that's it for this video. I got a review coming and I'll let you know what it's like to live with it and live without some of the other features. So get subscribed if you're not already. Check out the newsletter, check out the course. That 30% discount is not gonna last forever. Grab it while you can. I'll catch you in the next video. Later.